Vandiyathevan immediately came to a conclusion after hearing the words of Pallavataraya about the statehood. What are they going to say about statehood? Who are they to talk to? Be aware of what is going to happen in this meeting. You have to sit here. There is no better place than this. Let all Alwarkadayan go anyway, what do we care about him? Vandiyathevan already had the idea that some mysterious event was going to take place here today. All were Kadian's perversely meaningful words, the impetuous behavior of the fort gatekeepers, the half-hearted welcome of Sam Bavariyar, the furious language of the maddened ascetic, all these had caused him some doubts. Here is an ungodly opportunity to remove all those doubts and know the truth, why let it slip? Aha! Uh -huh. Even Kanamaran, whom he considered as his lifelong friend, did not tell him the truth. He has put himself to sleep and has come to this secret midnight meeting. I have to see him tomorrow. By this time, the janitor below had started talking. Vandiyadeva gave his ear and listened carefully. I have come to announce a very important message to you all. That is why Sam Bavariyar has convened this meeting. Sundara Shola Maharaja's health is very critical. I have consulted the palace doctors in private. They have said that there is no more hope, he will not live much longer. We need to think now. Saying that, Pulvatarayar stopped. What do the Josias say? Asked someone in the crowd. Shall I go and ask the soothsayers? A comet has been visible in the evening sky for some days. Isn't that enough? Said one. Then the astrologer said, the astrologers have also been heard to put it off for some time that's all. Anyway, we must consider who will be next in line. What's the point of thinking about it anymore? Aditha Kari Kaler was already crowned prince two years ago. Said another gruff voice. But the Maharaja did not ask for our opinion in deciding who should be next in line. Dasarada also convened a council of ministers and thought about making a title for Rama. He consulted ministers, vassals, army chiefs, and princes. But Sundara Chola Maharaja did not consider it necessary to listen to anyone's opinion. It is right that we did not ask for our ideas. But it is not right for God to say that he did not listen to anyone's ideas. The idea of Sembian Mahadevi, the elder Prataya, and Kundave Devi, the youngest Prataya, were heard. Can you say no? said one in a mocking tone, and a few in the crowd laughed. Aha! Uh -huh. You laugh. I don't know how you feel like laughing. My stomach burns to think about it, my blood boils. Why should I live with this life and live in shame? Today, the god who came to Sunad said that he would ask Turk to be sacrificed. A thousand years. He said, I want a human sacrifice born in a hereditary royal dynasty. Sacrifice me. My clan is ancient for a thousand years. Each of you should stab my neck with your knife. Mother Turk will be satisfied, my soul will be at peace. In this way, like a maddened devotee, Pula Vetarayar stopped. There was silence for a while. We heard the sound of the western wind blowing veer and the swaying of the trees outside the fort wall in that wind Marmara. The king of Palvur should bear the ridicule and the resulting laughter. You are our incomparable leader. All of us here are willing to carry out your orders. We are walking in the way you have shown us. Please forgive us. Sambu Varyar said with emotion. All these countries like Kodagu Nadu, where Pani River is produced, were subjugated and paying tribute to the Chola Empire. The tiger flag of our Chola nation is flying in so many countries. Even Elam to the south and the double zone to the north and Venji must have bowed to us by this time. I need not give reasons for not doing so, you know them all. Yes, everyone knows, there are two reasons why Elam, Dugupadai, Venji and Kalinga did not obey. One reason is Prince Aditha Kari Kalar, the leader of the Northern Army, the other reason is his younger brother Arulmas Hivarma, the leader of the Southern Army. Thilich Kairambalat was the one who laid the golden roof. But Prince Aditha Kari Kalar builds a golden mansion in Kanchapuram to live in. The palaces where the Pallava emperors lived for generations were not enough for his status. He builds a gilded palace. 
Upon inlays gems and vitriums on the walls of the palace. He has not yet sent a single copper coin to the treasure road in the capital of the goods he conquered and conquered in Gong Apati, New Lampati, Kodagu, etc. Upon inlays gems and vitriums on the walls of the palace. He has not yet sent a single copper coin to the treasure road in the capital of the goods he conquered and conquered in Gong Apati, New Lampati, Kodagu, etc. Upon inlays gems and vitriums on the walls of the palace. He has not yet sent a single copper coin to the treasure road in the capital of the goods he conquered and conquered in Gong Apati, New Lampati, Kodagu, etc. Is the Golden Mansion finished? Yes, I came to know through my intimate spies that it has been completed. Also letters came to the Sundara Chola Maharaja from his noble eldest son. That the Sundara Chola Maharaja should come and stay for some time in the newly built Golden Palace. Is the Maharaja going to Kanchi? Asked someone in a worried voice. You don't need to worry about that, I am here to see to it that nothing like that happens, my brother is also the guard of the Tanjore Fort. No one can enter the Tanjore Fort without the permission of the small Palyavatare. No one can interview the Maharaja without my knowledge. No one can give a straw. So far two or three straws have been stopped. I gave up. Long live Palyavatare, long live the cleverness of King Palyavur, long live his valour. There were chants of. Listen more, the actions of Prince Aromas Hivarmar who went to fight in Elam are more strange than the things done by the Crown Prince. What do we know about the Dharma of war? What have our forefathers practised for hundreds of years? Earnings should be done in those foreign countries. Soldiers should be paid with the goods they capture in those countries. Much of the goods should be sent to the government treasury in the capital. But do you know what Prince Arul Hivarmar is doing? We should send food from here to all our soldiers in the country of Ela, for a year, I have also sent food on several ships ten times. Strange! Strange, I can't stand this injustice, I've never heard anything like this. Voices arose. Listen to the reason given by Prince Arul Hivarmar for this amazing thing. Earning food for our soldiers in the invaded country will lead to the dissatisfaction of the citizens there. We have no fight with the people of Elam except with the royal clan of Elam. Therefore, we must not make them suffer in any way. Then the government should be governed by the people's sincere will. Therefore, money and food should be sent from here. At this moment someone in the crowd said, We have never heard of the war dharma of not asking anything from the people of the invaded countries falling at their feet. Said. Listen to the calamity that results from that. Due to the actions of the two princes together, the treasure and grain stores of the Tanjore Palace are often reduced to a great extent. I am forced to collect high taxes from you all. This is why I have been appointed as a divine official. If I did not think that the superiority of the Chola country is important, I would have lost this position at some point. Ah. Not at all. Your presence in this position is the greatest protection for us all. Have you not told the Maharaja about these illegal things? What goes without saying? It's been said many times. Ask the big brat each time, ask the younger brat. The only response I get is. As I said earlier, the Maharaja has lost the power to think for himself. He doesn't even listen to our ideas on important matters. His grandmother Sembian Madhavi's voice is his scripture, next, he asks his Selvak Kumari Kundave Prati for advice. Me and the other ministers who are grey-headed in the service of the kingdom. We should go and stop to ask the advice of that little girl who has never been north of Kaladam and south of Kudamurti, how is the story? We have never heard of women interfering in kingdom affairs like this since the beginning of this Chola kingdom. How long can we endure such humiliation? Or if you all agree, I will leave this state responsibility and the burden of filling the treasury with taxes and stay with my own town. Don't. Don't. Pavur the Var shouldn't abandon us like that. The Chola Empire, which was established by thousands of soldiers who fought hard and shed their blood for four generations, will crumble to pieces in an instant, said Sambuariyar. Then you must give me an idea what to do in this situation. 
you must tell me what is the remedy for this woman's kingdom which has become worse than the Ali kingdom, said the king of Pavur. 